Now while showing you a single stepping through the assembly in slides is great, that's really just giving you a fish and now I want to teach you to fish. And to do that, you're going to have to know how to write your own code in an IDE and compile it and then disassemble it. So for this, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition, which I'll just refer to as Visual Studio from now on. And this is the typical sort of Windows development environment or Visual Studio is at least usually the pro version. And so the community version is the free version that's missing, missing some features that developers would want. And also you should be aware that if you compile executables using the community edition, you have to use a different installer in order to install the redistributable libraries. So over in your Windows trial VM that you should have gotten set up as part of the overall lab setup instructions, go ahead and paste in the architecture uh, 101 class code zip file from the class and extract that. Navigate into the code for class and then open specifically the Visual Studio solution file. Now from here, I want you to do like you did when you were creating the Fibber example and create a new project in the context of this by going to Add New Project. Select Empty Project and then Next. And then let's call this Call a Subroutine 1. Create it. Right click on Source Files, Add new item and call a subroutine1.c add. Now of course you have to insert the assembly code like so. Save the assembly, right click on call a subroutine1 and set as startup project. This is very important because this is going to be what gets invoked when you hit the start of debugger. And then right click on call a subroutine and set the same sort of compiler options that you used in order to simplify the assembly in Fibber. So general, no set program database, no support for just my code debugging, then under advanced, nope, sorry, code generation, set basic runtime checks to default and set the security check to disabled. Then under linker, which are general, disable incremental linking. And under advanced, disable address based layout randomization, because otherwise we're all going to be seeing different addresses and you won't be able to follow along. When you're done with that, hit apply and then OK. Now go ahead and set a breakpoint on main and start the debugger. Once you've done this, you should have you know, already set up your uh, environment however you want, whatever windows you want. I have the registers at top and you know the notional stack at the bottom. I'm going to change my stack layout to eight bytes at a time. And then if you right click here, you should see go to disassembly and you may already have a disassembly window open off to the side. And there we go. Now you have the same assembly instructions that I was showing you in the slides and you can proceed to step through the code. So see RSP minus 28 is what's coming up next. We can see that RSP is currently set for 14 FE08. We can confirm the same thing up in the register window. 14FE08. And so if we go ahead and step into this assembly instruction, it'll execute it. And now RSP is set to 14FDE0. And so from here, the point is basically, you know, you can create whatever code you want, disassemble whatever code you want, step through the code, see the changes to the registers. The registers will get highlighted in red like so if they're actually changing. And this basically just gives you the opportunity to play around. So in the overall solution, I've included a scratch pad entry. And so you can just go ahead and you know play around inside of there, put whatever code you want, disassemble it and see what gets generated. So what are our takeaways from call subroutine one? 
Well, we learned about the sub instruction, the call instruction, the return instruction, the add instruction, the move instruction. And we also saw that there was some weirdness going on with an allocation and then removal of hex 28 on the stack, which we don't really know why yet, but I added it to the mystery list and we'll dig into it later.